Does that light bother you? down here if possible. Keep coming everyone. Make room. Let these people that are coming down, let's all get in here. Yeah. Holds 80 at least. Keep coming, keep coming, make room. Yeah. Got some room right here, just come up. Yeah, right right let's fill this in here. Keep coming. Is anybody? I don't see Perry. She's bringing up the rear there. She's here there. She's there. She's at the door. All right, we have everyone. Are you the last one? Oh, no. Okay, so let's let's take a moment and consider where we are and why we're here. We are at the site of the palace of the high priest at the time of Jesus was Caiaphas. The high priest was also essentially the mayor of the city of Jerusalem. You have King Herod, his jurisdiction is actually more Galilee. You have Pontius Pilate, the governor over the entire Judean province. But the um, municipal affairs are run by the high priest. So along with um, whatever would be present in the palace of the high priest, there was also a prison for people that were convicted of various crimes. And this is a particular dungeon that you just saw the entrance to when we were up there. That was a cistern that was turned into a dungeon. We know this. This is archaeologically sound. The house of Caiaphas and the prison associated with it by which they would lower a prisoner down with ropes into an empty cistern. Do you remember that happening anywhere in the Bible? Jeremiah. Jeremiah. And Jesus' life often parallels Jeremiah. So, of course, we're not told specifically in the Gospels that Jesus was kept in this dungeon. We are told that he was arrested in Gethsemane brought for a kind of preliminary hearing before part of the Sanhedrin, and then in the morning is taken to Pontius Pilate. But what about that night that Jesus was here? I don't think that Pontius Pilate invited Jesus into the parlor and offered him a cup of tea. He would have been put here in the dungeon. And there's a psalm that is unavoidably connected with this. That's why sitting on this little pulpit here, well, they've got it permanently attached, okay, is Psalm 88 in 52 languages mm -hmm. from Afrikaans to Ukrainian. I'm going to leave it open at the Ukrainian one. But I'm going to read to you from my own copy of the Psalms. So this is a somber place. Jesus has been betrayed. His disciples have fled. He's all alone. He's been condemned. He's been beaten up. And now he's lowered down into this dungeon. What is going through his mind? I think we know. Psalm 88. O oh Lord my God, my Savior, 
by day and night I cry to you. Let my prayer enter into your presence. Incline your ear to my lamentation, for I am full of trouble. My life is at the brink of the grave. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I have become like one who has no strength, lost among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the lowest depths of the pit, in dark places and in the abyss. You have put my friends far from me. You have made me to be abandoned by them. I am in prison and I cannot get free. My sight has failed me because of trouble. Lord, I have called upon you daily. I have stretched out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Will those who have died stand up and give you thanks? Will your loving kindness be declared in the grave? Your faithfulness in the land of forgetfulness? Will your wonders be known in the dark? Or your righteousness in the country where all is forgotten? But as for me, O Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Lord, why have you rejected me? Why have you hidden your face from me? Ever since my youth, I have been afflicted and at the point of death. I have borne terrors with a troubled mind. They surround me all day long like a flood. They encompass me on every side. My friend and my neighbor, you have put away from me and darkness is my only companion. Amen. Let's go up to the courtyard now. What number was that again?